Buongiorno to all of you, welcome to all the followers of venezia.net. My name is Igor, or Igor, as the little helper of Frankenstein, and today we are in an outstanding, amazing location, and the sky is even more interesting. We cannot ask for more today. And uh, where are we? We are something like one hour and a half away from Venezia, Venice. We are directly in the Hasolo Hills and uh, in a second I will show you exactly where Asolo is. Here we go, this beautiful hill that is right over there that you can see a little tiny dot that is the fortress. That's pretty much Asolo. That's pretty much uh, where the Regina Cornaro, the Queen Cornaro the Queen of Cyprus uh, used to live actually and she used to take care of part of the Venetian Republic uh, that's pretty much where Robert Browning uh, the British writer the B British poet uh, used to live and he wrote Asolando and so an incredible spot actually but that's exactly the spot where Eleonora Dusa used to live the same Eleonora Dusa that she lived uh, and died actually in Pittsburgh in the US but where are we exactly today and so we can clearly see that the countryside villas here are unbelievable we are right standing right in front of Villa Persicini that is dated back between the 1600 and the 1700 and don't forget that not far from here we got a lot of countryside villas that has been designed by Andrea Palladio the genius that he was born in Padua lived in Vicenza and worked extensively in the area of um, Venice but that's exactly the same architect that uh, he Mm, that he inspired the architect of the White House in the area of Washington DC and so you can clearly see that the wing the side wing with this kind of pinkish color on the left hand side there used to be the stables and so uh, in the past it was really normal having the stable next door to uh, the main villa and that's pretty much uh, probably where the servants they would live the one that they were taking care of all the fields uh, all the vineyards and think about that something like 500 years ago the concept of the countryside villas changed completely what happened mainly it happened that the rich merchants from venice they move into the area of asolo either via horse or either via the brenta river or using the brenta canal and using the burchiello this incredible posh boat that he would have crossed uh, half of the Pianura Padana uh, going through Padua and then continuing all the way up to Bassano del Grappa they would reach this area to develop uh, the vineyards. Why? Because uh, at that point they started to see the business, they started to see that uh, uh, importing the wine from uh, the uh, southern part of the Mediterranean or especially area like Crete or Greece they were losing money and so in 500 years ago they developed the countryside villas with the vineyards on the back today we got a super special guest <laughs> we got andrea hello everybody that is the manager of tenuta baron and today we are going to have an incredible overview of this fantastic place and you're going to have really a peace of mind and so that's uh, exactly where you should escape uh, every time that you are freaking out that you are stressed out and this is just the <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect spot place, the perfect place. <laughs> hello everybody i'm andreas brissa managing director of tenuta baron in asolo uh, where the is the area of prosecco docg the ocg means uh, origin guarantee and control control and guarantee i'm sorry uh, we are wine producers and also olive oil producers just you can see <laughs> Our main uh, production is wine, starting from sparkling wine, like Prosecco, moving to white wines, Chardonnay and other varieties, to red wines, which is Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Shiraz. Uh, especially uh, we 
are uh, sustainable agriculture producers uh, that means uh, we don't use herbicides or chemical things in our vineyards and this for us is very very important just uh, uh, Igor told to, to you there is the vineyard in front of the villa and in the back too <laughs> this is the particularly things of Tenuta Baron which is a 10 hectares uh, estate that means uh, 25 acres more or less completely closed with gates and uh, completely worked by hand for uh, Will, um, grow the plants and pick it up the, the grapes. Dear friends, just to let you know, where is Venice? That is always the question. <laughs> Venice is somewhere <laughs> over there. <laughs> somewhere to the land. <laughs> we can move uh, uh, directly to the our uh, aging room, which is a um, barrel's room, precisely. Uh, we're aging red wines in barrels, oak barrels, from uh, 10 to 24 months, depends on the, the type of wine. The, the barrel room is under the villa, the original is an original uh, cellar, probably date back to 1700. Uh, it's uh, a rock cellar in the northeast of the villa. Why northeast? Because northeast is the major, is the most humid and cold part of the the, the villa. We can oh. have a fast look inside because <laughs> the line under the soil is not so good. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have a little <laughs> look, but at this point uh, we must be quiet because the wine is sleeping here, <laughs> and so we cannot disturb. Andre, I believe that is better if we stop here. Okay, okay. And so the idea is that we cannot be too loud, otherwise we're going to spoil <laughs> the new <laughs> wine, and that is going to be a problem, <laughs> and uh, you're going to drink bad wine, and that Mm, this is something that we don't want that is going to happen. Also because this wine uh, you will have in 2022, uh, we have to wait <laughs> too much for the next one. <laughs> Inside here there is this barrels, it's a uh, barrique, 225 liters each one. It's oak wood from France, the major part. Allier is the, the, wood, bar, the, uh, the wood area. Uh, it's, uh, there is a Shiraz and Merlot divided in every barrique. Uh, Shiraz is quite atypically here. Uh, it's a project uh, started uh, in uh, 2007, planted a vineyard of Shiraz here. Shiraz normally is planted uh, in Australia, South Africa, uh, in Valle del Rodano, uh, Coduron in France. And we started this uh, experiment because we are really uh, passionate about red wines uh, and we want this uh, typically thing of Shiraz, which is the spice at the nose in your mouth. It's a really, really spicy taste. How many bottles do you produce of Shiraz, it's more or less? 3,500, it's a really low production, really low production. Thinking about we producing uh, wine for 120,000 bottles, uh, totally, but uh, of Shiraz, which is the name of the wine is Con Amore, with love in English. <laughs> it's only 3,500. Uh, everything is done with love in Italy. Yeah. Without love, we don't <laughs> go far. And so that's how everything is working. Here, there is the 2017 vintage inside the barrels. So we are out right now with 2016, okay? Uh, this wine need uh, five, four or five years before going to the market because we need to be very uh, relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that we need to shut up uh, and uh, we're going to sing a little song that so in this way they're going to sleep well and we're going to have an excellent quality of wine. And uh, that is exactly what we need <laughs> uh, and what everybody is expecting. But Andrea, how many bottles uh, do you produce of Prosecco here? We produce more or less uh, 50,000, 45, 50,000 bottles of Prosecco. Uh, in uh, two different uh, dosages, I mean uh, residual of sugar, which is brut, less sugar, and extra dry, more sugar. I know in English it's a little bit tricky because it's extra dry is more sugar, <laughs> and brut is less sugar, but this is the, the, the words we use uh, all over the world for uh, 
describe the quantity of sugar in a sparkling wine. And so take notes next time that you go to the supermarket, next yep. time that you go into a wine shop and whatever. We say again, brut is less sugar. If you like more uh, a wine uh, acid, uh, more uh, like um, vertical wine, you prefer brut less sugar if you like more uh, rounded wine a more uh, sweet wine it's not sweet is not the correct word because it's not sweet but uh, more rounded wine it's extra dry okay because there is more sugar inside this is the mean for example our wines have uh, one seven grams per liter the brut of uh, sugar inside and extra dry 14 grams per liter that uh, is that is for uh, understand the different the completely difference from one another one here we have a vineyard of Prosecco. The, correctly, the name of the plant is Glera, okay? But everyone called Prosecco because it's the wine it's coming from. <laughs> it's coming How old from. are these trees, more or less? But this vineyard is from 2014. It's only uh, seven years old. It's not so old. The major, the most oldest part is on the front of the villa. Uh, we have a postcard about 1909. Uh, of the villa, find it in a um, uh, mar market, historical market in Asolo, with the vineyard in front of the, the villa, a picture of the villa with the vineyard all around. Yeah, guys, uh, especially for our American friends, uh, remember that this area, uh, who came to visit this area, especially Bassano del Grappa, yeah. Mr. Ernest Hemingway, that he pretty much reached this area around June 19. 18 and in those days Ernest Hemingway would have been something like almost 20 years old he was working for the Red Cross and along the river Piave while that he was give, uh, think about that the hill that is somewhere over there that is the Montello and right on the bottom uh, we got the river Piave that's exactly where uh, we got the river but downstream that's where they shoot Ernest Hemingway and ended up into the local hospitals. Another thing, and so the hill that is standing right in front of us, uh, it was the Bosco di Venezia, the forest of Venice. And so all the wooden pilings that uh, we were chatting uh, during these days that we used for our uh, foundations in Venice, they were arriving from the Montello, but it was arriving from the forest of the Cadore or the Alps or the Dolomites, uh, but definitely we shipped to Venice all via river. And so an amazing job. Look <laughs> at this sky that it looked like a, a postcard, it looked like a Van Gogh sky or anything similar. <laughs> In the back of our company there is the Pre Alps, probably if we go a little bit <laughs> down the down hill. The hill. <laughs> 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 this is the Pre Alps with the Monte Grappa, which is very very important for our history because there is so many battles of the Second World War. <laughs> Yeah, but it's well renowned even for the grappa. Yeah, the grappa yeah. <laughs> we go down this way. Yeah, down this way. And also they are protect us from the cold wind in the winter and maintain our area a, a microclimate for producing olive oils and also grapes yeah that normally in italy when we talk about olive oil uh, you normally think about tuscany puglia campania sicily but let's say the southern part of italy normally when you talk about olive oil you don't really think uh, that we produce olive oil even in the veneto region and this is quite incredible that's the reason why that having uh, the grappa over there that is protecting us uh, is definitely stopping the wind, is stopping the cold, and we are able to produce uh, this wonderful product. How many bottles of olive oil do you produce if you don't have bugs that are eating <laughs> the trees? No, we're, we're producing uh, more or less uh, three, four hundred liters per year. It's a small, small production. Here, olives, uh, olive trees is not product really a lot of a lot of olives and also the percentual uh, is very low you need uh, uh, for one with 100 kilos of olives uh, you will have 10 to 12 liters of olive oil extra virgin olive oil that means 10 to 12 percent 
but your olive oil compared to the one that is down in Sicily or Puglia is stronger, is no, lighter, is, is more, sweeter. It's more lighter and more uh, with a very, very fruity taste. It's, it's an olive oil perfect for um, a fish on the oven, okay, or a, a salad, these kind of things. Oh, uh, from here, the, <laughs> the mountains is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a painting. <laughs> yeah. This is really amazing. Look at here. <laughs> we have a little walk down to the vineyard. This is a typically glera plant. It's like an art. Okay, and this is called doppio capovolto, the type of pruning. Okay, this is two branches. This year we'll be producing, we'll be producing glera grapes, which is quite a big, big grapes. Yeah, but you can see that the view from here is really spectacular. And uh, even the majority of the trees, they are all in blossom. I don't know how clearly that you can see it, but for sure they are just fantastic. And this area, talking about tourism, is great because you can do bicycle, you can do hand gliding from the Monte Grappa, the parachutings. Uh, you can do even kayaks down the Brenta Canal, down by the area of Bassano del Grappa. And so if you're coming around this area, think about uh, that is as beautiful as Tuscany. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and also when you are finished the sport parts, uh, you can have a very good glass of Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> you need to refill the tank <laughs> and you're going to go even faster. Wait, 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 wait a second that yep. we show them the primroses. Oh, yeah. Here we go, that everything is totally in blossom. Yeah, this is the spring is coming. No, no, you're right that once that, uh, of course, <laughs> after that you finish to do your sport uh, or your ride or anything similar, uh, this is the perfect spot uh, to have a nice glass of Prosecco or anything is good. <laughs> or, of course, uh, here we got amazing cheeses uh, and yep. salamis, uh, soppressa and so on. Uh, think about uh, that around this area we got uh, a cheese that is called formaggio ubriaco, the drunk cheese. Uh, <laughs> how everything ended up here. Uh, think about that, especially during the first war when the Austro-Hungarian Empire, they were ruling, uh, the Austrians actually, they were dueling and battling around this area. The local farmers, they decided to hide all the wheels of cheese under the grape that uh, when the soldiers they got here they thought that it was something that um, was already used that nothing was good and there was nothing hinder, hidden underneath and uh, after the war when the war was over, over uh, the local farmers they went <laughs> let's say up to dig the cheese out at that point it was drunk so you got this incredible taste of cheese and grape and wine that is mixed together look at the beauty this is our part of vineyard we can uh, grow only by hand i mean you can't use tractors or these kind of things and we have to do everything walking and by hand um, for the reason we are a very sustainable uh, <laughs> producer. <laughs> yeah, we don't use even the donkeys or anything similar or any other animal. <laughs> we are going up to the hill for a, a view from, from there. Like you see, it's all surrounded uh, by a wood. The other thing is, uh, in some specific areas here, they call it the vineyards of the heroes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you can clearly understand why. You must be a hero <laughs> to pruning here, working here, or at least you might have run a biathlon, triathlon, <laughs> or anything similar. It's difficult to pick it up the grapes <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, we're definitely getting higher. Yeah, but the view is stunning. The sky is stunning today. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of grape do we have here? Uh, this one, uh, no, it's, uh, this is Glara. The other one, it's I'll coming, show, I'll show it's you coming. another kind of grape easier in, in another row. A very ancient plant, very ancient plant of Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow. Okay. And uh, it's another kind of, uh, of pruning. This is called Cordone Speronato. Okay. It's only two gems, two free gems. And this is a plant that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it look old at this, this one. one. Probably. 40 to 50 years old. Wow. Okay. Look how steep the hills are. And so the villa is on the front. Is in front that you can recognize that pinkish, reddish, brownish color. And we have Aslo on the left and Bassano del Grappa on the right. <laughs> you can you don't <laughs> see but it's over there. Yeah, let's say we are right in the middle and in this place you will never be wrong. Anywhere you go, you're going to have amazing products, uh, amazing things. Uh, think about, for those of you that never been here, here we got the major industry is uh, what? All the technical equipment, uh, like uh, jackets or um, shoes, mm -hmm. uh, trekking shoes and these kind of things, uh, they has been invented or they has been produced exactly in this area. Uh, also, back to the back, to the hill there is a uh, Antonio Canova I temple <laughs> and hold the Gipsoteca. <laughs> yeah that, that's the thing Andrea is right yeah look at, at this <laughs> lovely walk that is just incredible and Andrea is right who was Antonio Canova he was born pretty much in the 1800 he has been one of the most incredible sculptures uh, that he worked in this area between of course uh, Treviso, Asolo and Venice but a lot of uh, his masterpieces, they are inside of the Louvre Museum. Yeah, <laughs> so Metropolitan Museum in New York also. <laughs> Absolutely. And so the, 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 the masterpieces of art that he done it, they travel all over the world. But why a lot of people, they don't know something. Mr. Canova, he was the man that he was in charge to go to Paris after that Napoleon yeah. did all the robbery. And so basically he went to, uh, let's say, the Louvre Museum, he started to knock the door, he said, hey guys, you got something that it belongs to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give, it, give us back everything. <laughs> and of course, they were not that happy, but let's say a lot of things, they went back home. <laughs> <laughs> you do some sculpture of Maria Antonietta. Yeah. See, si, see, si, see, si, see, si, you're right that uh, uh, Maria Antoinette lost the finger uh, last uh, summer that one of the oh, Austrians yeah, <laughs> tourists sit <laughs> on the statue and, <laughs> and she's fingerless at the moment <laughs> wait a second that we show the sky the pruning and the atmosphere that uh, uh, right now that we saw the olive oil we saw the estates uh, we heard about uh, Prosecco Andreas, try to explain us, uh, especially for the people that they just drink it and they okay. don't know exactly what behind that glass, how the method, how the uh, how you produce the Prosecco, more or less. Hey, Falco! We got Falco, Sorry. that is a bit worried. No, no, we, we don't steal Prosecco today, we leave it all to you. But it's, uh, it's quite easy. I mean, we, 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 we produce... Uh, the wine, like a normal wine from grapes, that means uh, pressing the grapes in a, mach in a machine, which we call is called press. When we were, when we have the the wine, the juice, uh, we put this uh, in another kind of steel tank, which is called autoclave. It's an under pressure steel tank. Uh, it can be from uh, 1,000 liters to uh, 100,000 liters. Okay, in that in that uh, tank. We do a second fermentation, okay? We uh, put yeast another time with sugar. In that way, because it's under pressure, we maintain CO2 inside. 
uh, in that uh, the, there the, the prosecco is born because you have bubbles and a fermentation inside the tank. After that, we bottling, put the cork, the famous cork you can open with the hand. <laughs> <laughs> like you hear, poof, poof, <laughs> party, <laughs> and here we have prosecco. That process, uh, starting from the picking up the grapes to put in the bottle, need uh, you can do in uh, three months, three four months. It's very very fast. Okay, for that reason uh, you maintain the freshness, a very fruity taste, and a very easy drink, a drinkable wine. Okay. Too easy sometimes. Too easy, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> tell us another thing. Every time that you go into a vineyard in a wine estate in Italy, you this can always possible. see the roses. Uh, the roses. Why? Uh, roses is the, on the same family uh, of vineyards. I mean, they can have the same, uh, some same uh, disease. Uh, one is uh, oidio, okay, is this disease uh, ro destroyed the, the grapes, but destroyed also roses. Roses is more delicate and have oidio before the, the vineyard. In that way, you can understand if, if you need to do some treatment for uh, um, save the vineyard because roses is uh, have a how can I say give you a an alarm okay this is the theoretical things right now we don't do treatments when there is the problems we do treatments before the problems roses uh, it's uh, only a uh, posh things <laughs> 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 it's very cool. It's very no, nice. no, it's definitely it's, it's definitely very cool. When they are on blossom, <laughs> those are just uh, beautiful and they are just fantastic. And uh, the entire idea, once that you come here, that you see all the roses in blossom, yeah. is really poetic. It's very it's, poetic. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a nice thing so you have around the vineyards uh, all over uh, <laughs> the world. <laughs> yeah, but every time that I'm bringing people to vineyards, oh, how cool! You got roses, you got lovely <laughs> flowers. Uh, th there's a there's always a reason in Italy beside the love we got always a reason uh, that is uh, that we do something L look at this sky that we got today that yeah. is just breathtaking wow this is a, this is a new vineyard it's a one and a half years old uh, it's a, an antique variety we find uh, in the in the old vineyard we pick it up the branches and make new plants only for us okay. wow let's see Again, is really steep. Yeah, it really is deep. <laughs> <laughs> so again, <laughs> that's why that we were talking about uh, the vineyards of the heroes, <laughs> vineyards of gods. <laughs> It's good for training your legs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, <laughs> after that, uh, you can do whatever you want without worries. <laughs> and uh, here we go. We definitely reached the wine temple at this moment. <laughs> This the is our new wine boutique, we call it this in like this. Was the stables of horses, the re the our stables of horses, the horses uh, we don't have anymore. And we rebuilt completely and made our new tasting room. Uh, it's a place we use for uh, uh, visiting, tasting, uh, events, uh, this, this kind of things. We do brunch in uh, Friday and Saturday with uh, our wines and local foods, typical local foods great combination you can go inside to have a check if you want look at here what is waiting for us <laughs> we don't want to spoil anything but at least you can get a quick glimpse <laughs> of what is going to happen in the next few minutes oh sorry yep but look at here i give you a 360 degree view and look how cool this place is this place is designed by bamax which is part of the group of a Baron group, which uh, own Tenuta Baron winery and also a furniture factory here in the area. It's famous for, for this kind of uh, stylish uh, furniture. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. Look at this table. Before that, we talk about wine. Look how, how cool this table is. Yeah, this is a piece of oak. <laughs> <laughs> Properly a piece of oak. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to have been pretty old too. Yeah. We, we don't start to count all the rings, but I believe that it's definitely pretty old. Have a look. 
that we can have a great angle. Here we have our the bar, the all the tasting area, the shop. If you uh, want to come, to let's have buy a uh, let's wine. have a look. Uh, that's so we can have <laughs> a, a little tour around. Yep. That I'm always impressed about the design of all these bottles. Hey guys, look at here. Wow. We can bring a, a bottle of wine on the fridge. That's why that we came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't only display bottles, but sometimes they uncork <laughs> the bottles too. Uh, before that we go, yeah. I, okay, you I show you, you one thing. You must show me the bouquet. Explain this one. Yeah. Bouquet is a project okay. called Have Fun. It started with camouflage wine, which is a bottle that was completely camouflage. Moved to jungle wine, which is a bottle uh, with this jungle mood. It's called jungle wine. May I bring it? Jungle wine. And the last product we release is bouquet. If you see the logo, it's upside down because it's a bouquet of flower. <laughs> Especially for our men that are connected right now. Remember, in this way, you save a lot of money. Yep. You got two <laughs> presents at the price of one. <laughs> so a this is flower and a good flower. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to please everybody. But uh, again, look at this. And we are going to show you the camouflage uh, in a second that is yeah. around the corner. It's around the corner. But what are you going to uncork right now? We uncork a Prosecco right now. Okay. An Asolo Prosecco Superiore. This is an extra dry, a little bit more rounded in your mouth. Uh, it's our... Uh, remind us, extra dry it means... More sugar. Brut less sugar great okay by now we should have learned the lesson and we should be all wine expert yeah <laughs> you don't have just to raise your glass and you say okay it's a white wine drink it up now we know if it is sweet or if it is a kind of dry or whatever is it the ocg that means uh, uh, origin control and guarantee okay that means in a specifically area which is our area you can produce only over here you can you can produce in another part of the world of it or Italy or also the province of Treviso because only the Asolo and Montello area can be Asolo Prosecco Superiore DOCG. This is a millesime 2019. That means it's only uh, wines from 2019 vintage. It's picked up by hands grapes and uh, now have a taste of this <laughs> all the hard work uh, that they done it climbing up and down all the hills uh, we will sh I will show you the the camouflage see si, see si, see si, that we are all <laughs> curious that we need to have a look especially we love uh, uh here we go camouflage wine it's very fancy <laughs> Camo wine. Camo wine. That a few years ago actually was super fashionable. The camouflage, uh, it still is, uh, but definitely this is super cool. Yeah, this is, was a project started. Uh, ah, here we go. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let me show even this one. That is how the packaging is coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, here we go. That's where the magic is starting. This is called Love Box. Okay, it's a wood box, completely wood, full wood box with two glasses and the wine with a hole for maintaining the wine like a bouquet. <laughs> for a really special occasion, this, this is Italian, Italian do yeah. it better. This is designed uh, by Joe Luto Studio, which is a very, very uh. interesting design studio in Vicenza. <laughs> Go outside for a, a glass of Prosecco. Uh, like I told you before, we are in a sust sustainable agriculture. Uh, that is a, is a sustainable wine. I turn around. Let's see. Okay. It's a 2019 vintage. We parcelized our vineyards. That means every vineyard depends on the position, age of the vines, and uh, places where it is. It's uh, picked up and produced separately. Party! Party. I hear <laughs> party! Oh, there we go. This is done. For us, is our most solid uh, product. May I 
take over the <laughs> absolutely otherwise is impossible must to sell the product is the extra dry this wine because uh it's no all over the world uh, prosecco extra dry because it's a more fruity more uh, rounded uh, uh, also is more uh, appreciated from to woman to men <laughs> everyone <laughs> like this kind of product oh, it's unbelievable the the smells it have from uh, of uh, fresh fruit uh, green apple uh, peach uh, white flowers uh, And when you drink you have a um, very smooth and uh, creamy bubbles uh, with this uh, a little bit acid taste of green apple oh, which is very refreshing after this walk <laughs> 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 uh, what uh, what else to say uh, we're producing also brut more sugar less sugar bravo that's exactly <laughs> what we know we need to remind us in brut with l low sugar inside we're producing also rosé this is this is called rosé delle stelle rosé of the star uh, it's a blend of three grapes verduzzo trevigiano which is white grapes raboso which is red grapes and merlot and is one of our special product we have but compared to the Prosecco, which is the method, how, how you produce it? We said that uh, before we were doing a double fermentation, more or less, for the Prosecco. This, this is for the, the Rosé, how is working? Uh, for this Rosé, it's also uh, the method is the, is the same. It's called Charmat method, because Charmat was the man uh, make the method, invent the method. The machine was invented by um, Martinotti, which was Italians, invent the machine, but Mr. Charmant, a, France, a French man, invent the methods. <laughs> this is, this is this, uh, funny story about uh, the method. There is also Champenoise method, which is uh, the method you use uh, in Champagne, okay, uh, is uh, make the second fermentation, but in bottles, the right direct in the bottles, not in the steel tanks, I explained to you before. Okay, it's completely different ways, because we have uh, sec the second fermentation in 40, 30, 40, 50 days, more or less, here in Prosecco and our Rosé. Champenois method is minimum 12 months, more lungs, okay, more lungs. So for a different taste completely, uh, butter uh, or patisserie taste, these kind of things. Also, we produce... Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait a second, how would you pair the uh, Prosecco Superiore di OCG? You would associate with fish, uh, with, with what exactly? Of course, uh, we associate with fish because... Uh, so hold on, we are talking about uh, the Prosecco Superiore DOCG Extra Dry. Extra Dry. It's the perfect things you can have for aperitif. I mean, starting a, a dinner or a lunch, mm, probably with some uh, typically uh, Cicchetti from Venice. <laughs> Cicchetti is a, a piece of bread with something on the top. Will be salami or some cheese or fish. Okay. With the baccala, with the baccala, cold, fish. cold fish. This kind of things and a glass of Prosecco. This is the better way you can have a glass of Prosecco because it's uh, cleaning your mouth, refreshing your mouth completely and uh, you have uh, the very strong taste of the Cicchetto and after a very clean mouth, a very good taste of uh, fruit uh, and freshness. This is for me is the best you can have with Prosecco. And I tell you another thing that here, especially in the Veneto region, Treviso area, we do a lot what? Tiramisu okay. and Prosecco. Never. Never. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> because the two flavors, they don't match. Tiramisu goes with caffè, caffè. coffee, it's not true. with the Prosecco. No. If you have to match uh, sweet things, you have to have a sweet wine. Very, very sweet. Not uh, extra dry, but more dry or demi-sec. <laughs> but okay. wait a second, Andrea. Now it's getting really, 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 really popular that a lot of people, they are eating the pizza okay. with a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Would you pair a Prosecco with a special pizza? Which flavor with or the I brut or the... I would pair uh, probably more rosé okay. with pizza because uh, here you have uh, uh, some good taste uh, of uh, mm, like uh, wood strawberries, I don't know in English, uh, strawberries, uh, raspberries, these kind of things, uh, more structure 
on the on the wine and uh, it's perfect uh, to pair with uh, mozzarella di bufala sì. okay and bread and pizza is this with some tomato <laughs> but more or less is this <laughs> but at the end of the day it's perfect for the sushi i believe yeah it's perfect of the su- with sushi but we have also a sushi restaurant in asolo and we pair a lot of our wines with the sushi uh, prosecco is perfect if you have a sashimi Uh, also is perfect uh, rosé with uh, tataki di tonno, uh, tataki of tuna, <laughs> uh, this kind of plates. Uh, we serve it in our bonsai sushi restaurant in Asolo. We also produ- produce red wines like uh, we saw before in the, in the cellar. And this is Con Amore, we told we. That's the one that is <laughs> sleeping in the barrels that we saw it before, <laughs> actually. And this so this one is stayed in the barrels. How many months? This stays six, uh, 16 months on the barrels, wow. uh, one year on the bottle. And we just released uh, this uh, February, uh, this January, sorry, is a 2016 vintage. It's uh, 78% Shiraz and 22% Merlot. And you would uh, drink it with what? Um, uh, You know, it's a, it's a very interesting question because you can have for like a relaxing glass of wine in front of the fireplace <laughs> and <laughs> nothing else or pairing uh, with uh, not very strong meat. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know, a tagliata that is a, a cutted piece of meat on the grill, grill or uh, something uh, like this or, or a pasta with ragu, <laughs> with Italian sauce, bolognese sauce, okay, more or less these kind of things. Because it's a not a very strong red wine, it's more a red wine looking to elegance uh, and uh, freshness uh, and a bit of sweetness, uh, okay. It's a call uh, with love, con amore. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And so if there's anybody interested, I show you the website and everything, that's so in this way you can visit the tenuta baron that today they guested us in this incredible place and so i would like to say thank you thank grazie you to andrea <laughs> and come and visit us as long that they open the 